Well, hello. My name is John Bonner. I'm a missionary, a pastor, and the director of Calvary Chapel Bible College in Cajamarca, Peru, in South America. I am honored that you would listen to my unique testimony, and I pray that it would be a blessing and an encouragement to you. Chapter 7 A Wonderful Confirmation And he sent and brought David in. Now he was blonde, had beautiful eyes, and was handsome. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is the one. 1 Samuel 16, 12 It was on his visit to Costa Rica in 1983 that Tomás Shaki told me there were two sisters that began attending the fellowship in Mexico City. I smiled at the news and sensed at that moment that one of the two would someday be my sister-in-law. December 5th, 1984, Mexico City, Mexico. Maria del Pilar Moctezuma Alvistegui loves to knit. She equally loves to give her knitted creations away just to bless people. Shortly after my sister's death, several from our team went on an outreach trip to Tehuacan, Puebla, four hours southeast of Mexico City. I was driving and Pilar was sitting behind the driver's seat, secretly knitting a Christmas gift for me. It was then that the Lord began to stir her heart. My heart was stirred long before hers. She wanted to learn English, and I was all too accommodating to help her learn. It soon became obvious that we had an attraction for each other. It was on the cold winter evening of December 5th, 1984, in the living room of the bodega, when we shared our first tender, I love you, with each other. Right then, we talked of marriage and spending the rest of our lives together. We decided that night to independently search the scriptures, trusting that God would confirm His leading regarding marriage through His Word. She returned to the girl's apartment, and I began reading the book of Ruth in my room, where I had left off in my devotional reading. It was so exciting! Ruth's story paralleled Pilar's story in so many ways. Like Ruth, Pilar was a foreigner. Both women had come to work in the harvest field where their future husbands were busy serving the Lord. Boaz and Ruth's work relationship turned into a deep friendship that eventually resulted in marriage. I had the confirmation sooner than I expected, and I could not wait to see Pilar in the morning, for God had confirmed His leading to my heart from the Bible. We found each other on the street, Bibles in hand, eager to share our God-given discoveries. Pilar had been reading in 1 Samuel, where the prophet was searching for the next king of Israel to replace Saul. Samuel had lined up all the sons of Jesse, ever too quick to choose the eldest Eliab. But God told him not to look at his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. She excitedly continued, Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all of your sons? Jesse admitted there was one more, the baby, the runt of the litter, the insignificant, unqualified one, who was out somewhere watching the sheep. Samuel noted the shepherd was ruddy, blonde in Spanish, beautiful-eyed, and handsome. Arise, he said, anoint him, for this is the one. The Lord has spoken to us very directly in his word and confirmed that we were to marry. We thought it wise to seek counsel from Jim and Krista Foote, a highly esteemed and much-loved missionary couple with whom we would eventually work in Tehuacan, Puebla. When we told them the news, they told us they were not at all surprised that they had been praying for Pilar and me as a couple for quite some time. Within two weeks, we were engaged and married six months later on June 1, 1985, at the Union Church in El Bosque de Chapultepec, Mexico de Efe. We were convinced that in one of the most important decisions in life, God had given us a smiling nod of approval, confirming His will through the promises of the Bible. After all, His word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. I believe there are four ways through which believers can determine God's leading today. First, He places His desires in our hearts. 
God will also speak to us through mature, spiritually gifted mentors such as pastors. He will also confirm his leading through God-orchestrated circumstance. And finally, and most importantly, he will speak to us as we read through his word daily. Jesus told his followers, My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. Our shepherd oftentimes speaks to us by placing a thought in our minds or nudging us towards making certain decisions. This is the beautiful work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. This is wonderfully available to believers who have submitted themselves to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Those who do not know Jesus do not have this ability. Comedian Joy Behar recently suggested that Mike Pence, the Vice President of the United States, had a mental illness because he claimed he hears from God. Unwittingly, she offended millions of Christians who also believe God speaks to them and abruptly issued an apology. I grieve for Joy, who simply exposed her ignorance of normal Christian experience, and I pray she may also someday enjoy intimacy with her Creator. God will also speak to us through other men and women He places into our lives. He has placed a great number of godly men into my life to help me discern His voice and determine His will in life. It might be through personal interaction, discipleship, sermons, or by reading books written by inspiring servants of God. The Lord will many times open and close doors for me. An example of a closed door would be that I have no financial provision to proceed with a plan, while God's provision of an unexpected monetary gift would be His confirmation that I continue to take steps of faith in certain areas that I have been praying about. Of course, the very best way of discerning divine guidance is through the pages of the Bible. God's Word is not like any other book. It is divinely inspired. Each word is anointed and comes from Him. We receive instructions from heaven as we read portions of the Bible each day and allow it to minister truth to us. God is able to show us fresh, applicable things each day that pertain to our lives. In his book, On Being a Servant of God, I love what Warren Wiersbe says about hearing God's voice through the pages of Scripture. Now, I am not one of those superstitious persons who seeks God's direction by opening my Bible just anywhere and pointing to a verse. But when the Spirit of God impresses me in the course of my regular Bible reading, I stop and pay attention. Sometimes, almost miraculously, a verse will leap off the page and speak to our hearts something that particularly applies to our specific situation. God will confirm His leading through intentional, daily Bible reading and meditation. One of my favorite teachers in a Bible college class once said, I expect God to speak to me every time I open the Bible. I don't stop reading until I know I have heard from God. I have applied this to my life, and I have found it to be true. When we have God's fourfold confirmation in our decision-making, we are then ready to make major steps of faith. Whether it be concerning marriage, investments, career decisions, or making commitments in ministry, listen for God to speak, number one, through our hearts, number two, through others, number three, through circumstances, and number four, and especially through the scriptures. Pilar and I thank the Lord for over 30 years of marriage. All marriages are tested and encounter difficult times. When we reflect back at God's promises from the scripture and remember how he brought us together, we are assured that he will lead us on into the future. God's promises are like glue to us. June 24, 1987, Santa Monica Hospital, Mexico City, Mexico. Two years after we married, God gave us our firstborn child, Michelle Daniela Bonner, fruit of our love. I am always proud to introduce Michelle as my Chilanga, one born in Mexico City. It is interesting that Michelle was born in Santa Monica Hospital in Colonia Polanco, while her dad was also born in Santa Monica Hospital, but in Southern California. Not allowed in the birthing room, I had to remain in the hospital lobby, along with several women from our church awaiting news of the baby's arrival. When the nurse came out to inform us that the mother is doing fine and that it was a baby girl, those present formed a small prayer circle to thank the Lord for His goodness and protection. 
When I opened my eyes after praying, I was amazed by the large tear puddle around and on top of my shoes. To this day, I shed tears of joy for the precious baby girl the Lord has given us. Pilar and I also thank Jesus for the two precious granddaughters, Nora and Mila, who many years later, Michelle and her German husband, Simon, have given us. The Myth of Coincidence Are these biblical passages and situational circumstances coincidental? Or is this the confirmation of a powerful God who sovereignly governs each and every aspect of our lives? The author of the 119th Psalm highlights for us the importance of seeking God's direction through His law, precepts, commands, testimonies, and statutes. He says, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalm 119, verse 105. God expects us to find our way through the illumination that comes from reading the scriptures. There are some very helpful books in the market, but there is nothing quite like the Bible. It is a supernatural book through which our supernatural God talks to us. I am convinced that God wants to speak to us in the most important of life's decisions. Career, marriage, child rearing, ministry, always confirming His leading through His Word. Do you remember times in your life where God has confirmed your important decision-making through the pages of Scripture? 